the whole issue is uh, of legitimacy, as as he's brought it out very very clearly, uh, and also the fact that uh, what the Taliban is going to be ultimately in the future, as far as being in government is concerned, we really cannot say. Legitimacy may contribute something else, a lot of change in attitude, etc. I know it's going to be Islamist, generally Islamist in, in angle, but you're seeing what's happening to Saudi Arabia. It is changing. Saudi Arabia was one of the countries which recognized the Taliban in 1996. So did the UAE. Both the countries have changed completely. So it's not as if everything is going to be fixated. You must remember that Taliban has to still run this country. Where is the money going to come from? Is going to be a consortium of nations which will have to put together some money to allow the Taliban to run Afghanistan if and when it comes to power. But I am concerned more about the dilemma that we are going to be facing in the near future. And that is the fact that we have supported the government of national unity for long. We have trained the Afghan National Army and the Afghan National Police. We've trained their cadets in our academies. We've equipped them with a certain amount of equipment. Now to being negotiating and speaking to the Taliban is fine, but negotiating when there's a battle going on in the streets is going to cause a major moral dilemma for us. Uh, we will have to keep this aspect in mind while yeah, we are please. going to be The real politics says that we understand that the Taliban will eventually come to power. And it's in the interest of India, I think, to follow a, a transparent route of, of negotiating or speaking to the Taliban. Okay, Barka, so let me just yes. one second. Okay, uh, Barka, okay. permit me to make a point. Please. Where please. is the contradiction? How is it contradictory? The Americans are still equipping the, uh, the Afghan National Army. They are going to get $3 billion and they have entered into a deal. While they were fighting the Taliban, they entered into a deal. So where is this question of moral ambiguity? Am I saying we, don't support the Afghan National yeah, Army? Do it yeah, by all means. Absolutely. That is the, the gray zone. This is where the gray zone will emerge. No, 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 that is the gray zone that strategists and strategic thinking bridges. No, it's we not can't really. have moral one minute, here, morality. One minute, here. No, let, let's visualize this, right? Let's visualize that the Afghan troops funded, trained, uh, you know, uh, partly funded, partly, uh, you know, quite, quite actively trained by India, uh, set out to fight the Taliban. And then yes. there are parallel public images of India also talking to the Taliban. This is not gray, it's pretty black and white. There is a paradox. No, no, how is it? Have the Americans not a the paradox? Have the Russians not bridged this paradox? And are, and are the Americans not accused completely of a failed Afghanistan war and a failed Afghanistan policy? There's no question that the Americans have flung no, not, a 20-year no, no, war. Uh, listen, the Americans, I've said time and again, the Americans suffered a strategic defeat in Afghanistan. Yes. But that didn't prevent them and that still has not prevented them from playing, from talking to both sides. That is what diplomacy is all about. Okay. There is no such thing as embarrassment here. Okay. All right. Shalini, let's start taking last comments. We'll start with you. No, I, I think just, you know, it's more engaging with the Taliban and not doing it overtly or covertly is a different matter altogether. But engaging them as a significant stakeholder, whether even if hypothetically you have a, the you know, Afghan government taking, you know, lead, but still you will have the Taliban as a stakeholder. So it's about assessing the situation and having a proactive policy by India as a big power. I think that is what India is trying to do and trying to figure out that how we need to now go ahead with this whole situation and not allow Afghanistan, you know, to be used by uh, by the counter actors like you know Pakistan and China against us. So that that having a proactive policy and thinking on those lines is something I think I I support that fact. Okay, Happy Mon, what does this do to the safe havens debate that has often taken place between the world and Pakistan, between India and Pakistan? And that's where this whole good Taliban, bad Taliban uh, context actually came, that there are no good terrorists and bad terrorists. Today we are saying, uh, today we are basically saying that groups that we recognize to be terrorists now have led to this. You know, this can happen. It has happened with the Hamas in, in, in Palestine, but that was through an electoral process, right? So it's a bit different. Here you actually have the Taliban shooting, surrendering Afghan troops on the streets. It's somewhat different. 
Well, as I said earlier, um, you're talking about um, not a monolith. There are there are ser there, there are several several groups within groups and within groups in in, in Taliban as far as Taliban is concerned. So um, just because you know 20 Afghan soldiers were slaughtered by the Taliban, I don't think we should shun the policy of reaching out to Taliban or talking to the Taliban. Um, for me, it is not even about whether or not we reach out to the Taliban and talk to the Taliban. For me, when are we beginning to have open talks with the Taliban? When are we going to have open and embarrassed talks with the Taliban? I think that is the most important part. I just want to also add, um, you know, when I when I said if you talk to the Taliban, you also have to then apply the same yardstick to others. I don't mean talking to the Lashkar Taiba, of course. I'm talking I'm talking about talking to the dissident political leaders in Jammu and Kashmir. I mean, the recent talks that the government of India had with the Kashmiri political leaders, it was only the mainstream politicians. Why not the dissidents? The government of India in the past has engaged the dissidents. Um, in fact, the government of India in the past has engaged the Hezbollah Mujahideen. So it is not as if uh, there is no history of India engaging insurgents. So I think there is absolutely no reason why statecraft and realism um, should stop us from reaching out to some of these people. Um, even if you don't want to talk about the moral implications of that, realism requires reaching out to various people who we don't like. Okay. Uh, General Yasnayan, before I give Ambassador Kaju the last word, uh, you know, there will be a lot of this kind of rhetoric now that if you can talk to the Taliban, why not do PBC? Uh, whether it's within the Indian context, whether it's across the border with Islamabad and so on. But I still, I'm still stuck to my question that, you know, does it alter how we frame the debate around terrorism going forward? To me, that is the, going to be the challenge, right? There is, I know Ambassador Kaju is disagreeing with me. I know that we have spoken in the past to the Hezbollah Mujahideen, but even with that, even there, we broke the Hezbollah Mujahideen. We created another faction. It was years of back channeling, and then we got them to the dialogue table. I do not remember a time where we have simply gone publicly dialoguing with a group that we have described as a terror group for decades. See, Barkha, these are very different. They are not really parallels. Uh, discussing something with Taliban and then applying the same logic and rationale to Jammu and Kashmir. But obviously, the argument will be made, and we need to be always ready to be able to counter yeah. that. I think abjuring violence, as with you, what you very correctly said, the whole issue is about terrorism. Abjuring violence is the key to the whole thing. Uh, this is the problem with Pakistan. Our talks with Pakistan will probably can always take place if Pakistan gives a commitment that it will not involve itself with any acts of terrorism or violence as far as Jammu and Kashmir and rest of India is concerned. Similarly, I think with the internal groups, now that the situation is well under control, stable, etc., I think we are building up towards that situation. We are, it seems, although suddenly in the last couple of weeks we are seeing a few you know, bouts of violence here and there in the valley. These are dying embers. I still feel these are dying embers. And if Pakistan doesn't have the time and uh, the focus and attention towards Jammu and Kashmir. This is going to die out in a very short while. So therefore, I do think the conditions are going to come up in the very near future, which is what Happy One talks about, that an, an, an attempt to reach out. This was a very unexpected thing which happened on the 24th of June. The reach out to the 14 uh, so-called uh, the 14 uh, mainstream leaders. I think there are lots of surprises still waiting for us. And the government of India may be having a lot of other different things. I agree. I, I, I agree. I think the one thing we can safely say about this government is that it doesn't play to any script that that, that any of us can uh, can predict. And consistency uh, is not its uh, necessary strong suit. Uh, but Ambassador Kaju, you would argue that consistency is highly overrated in your profession anyway. Uh, so go ahead with the last word. I do believe that there are times in diplomacy when one has to be consistent. But there are times in diplomacy when one has to be realistic, even if that means the abandonment of consistency. You can say that the Taliban were nurtured by the Pakistanis and uh, they were safe havens for the Taliban, which permitted the Taliban to retreat into safety and then come back and attack American forces. And as Gen General Hasnain, as an eminent army per uh, person who's been core commander, would agree with me that no army can actually defeat another force, even a force like the Taliban and an army like the American army, if their safe havens are secure, as they were in Pakistan. 